Hey guys, it's Bridgette with Sandy Seed Company, and today I want to talk about marigolds, a super easy to grow, beautiful, beneficial plant that you should be growing in your garden. But before I get into how to plant it, how to harvest it, and everything you need to know, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button so you're notified anytime we do a video. We also have something exciting in store for you. We're going to be giving you, giving away to you a free pack of marigold seeds. So if you want to be entered in the, that contest, make sure you comment on this video, like and subscribe, and then enter into our newsletter so you can be notified if you're a winner. I'm gonna teach you how to plant these, so if you win the seeds, you're definitely gonna have some growing in your garden. Okay, so let's get into it. Marigolds are a super rad flower because in zone nine and 10, it's a flower that you can plant really late into the season and it thrives in heat. It is a culturally important flower for us here in Southern California, Baja, Mexico, and, and going south. It is, uh, some people call it the, the day of the dead flower. It's a gorgeous flower, and it's something that pollinators love, and you also can use it as a border plant to kind of help protect from insects. It uh, can be used as, as a trap uh, cropping plant, meaning that it'll, it will trap insects inside of here and also it's just part of a diverse, beautiful garden. Okay, so today we're gonna to talk about planting, care, and harvesting. We got three sections to cover. So first thing, let's talk about planting. So marigold seeds are really easy to plant if you know a few things. I really love marigolds because they're a tough plant that I can plant really late in the season. I can put it out on the farm or in the garden and I know it's gonna do well in the heat. Now, the seeds are relatively small, and so that factors into how you plant them. If you look here, they're pretty small, and they are long and skinny, okay? Now, you don't want to cover them up with too much soil because they're so small. They don't have a lot of energy to break through a lot of soil, so that's a common thing that we see people do. They just simply plant them too deep. I also would recommend that you plant them in a starter pot get them up to size, and then transplant them out. You can direct sow them, but it's a little bit more difficult. You're gonna waste a lot of seed because uh, you know, inevitably they won't be covered correctly. Birds might dig them up. And then also you're gonna to have to thin later. Spacing on marigolds, like a lot of flowers, is important if you want big, beautiful blooms. If they're really, really crowded together, you're gonna to get puny little blooms. So how do you start it from seed? Well. This is a nice size little starter pot. <clears throat> we use these for a lot of our crops. And I've got seed starting mix in here. If you can't get your hands on seed starting mix, use very high quality potting mix, okay? But the point is, is you don't wanna use just old garden soil. You wanna use something that's gonna hold in moisture and allow the seed to germinate very quickly. If you've watched any of my other videos, I go on and on and on and on about how successfully you can be at seed starting if you use a seed starting mix. So we've got some high quality stuff here. Now this has been a little bit moistened. Um, typically if I'm planting uh, a whole flat of it, I'll make sure this is really, really moist. For the sake of the video, you guys can see here that, that it's, it's moist but not sopping wet. But what I wanna show you that's really important is I like to plant the seeds on top of the soil. My biggest pet peeve, which you guys probably know because I'm always talking about it, is when people put a hole with a, their finger and then they stick the seed in and then they entomb it. Entomb, is that a word? I don't know. They, they basically bury it never to be able to pop up. Not a good idea. If you set the seeds on top, then what you can use is something like this to sift the soil. I also like just a good old fashioned spaghetti strainer. We also have these strainers running around. Uh, anything to basically make sure that no large particles of soil are going to fall on top of the seed and inhibit it from germinating, right? So I'll put a few on top. In something like this, I would do maybe two, three max. I really only want one to grow per, per pot. But in case one doesn't pop up, I'll do that. And then you can see I get a nice thin layer of soil and these big chunks, they don't fall through this sifter and fall on top of the seed. You can see like a big stick like this, if that fell on top of the seed, it could prevent it from germinating. So 
That's a pro tip that really makes a big difference when you're planting your seeds. So we got this guy planted here. I'm going to stick this in a, in a tray. Let's see my mess of a greenhouse like this. I love bottom watering. So this tray, this uh, pot will go inside the tray. I can put water in here and I can guarantee that it's gonna stay moist to germinate. So that's how you start the seeds. Now, when do you wanna start the seeds? Well, marigolds are a uh, tender annual, meaning frost will kill them. So if you are outside zone nine and 10, you have to wait until your frost in the spring is totally gone before you plant them uh, uh, out into the ground. So you could start them three to four weeks before your last frost and then plant them out. But keep in mind, they love warm soil. So if you are in an area that tends to get a lot of cool spring or cool early summer weather, just go ahead and wait and plant out all your other crops and then get to the marigolds. Here in Southern California, I really like to plant them in June. And then I will succession plant them all the way through the end of July because I wanna have flowers well into October for Day of the Dead. Um, and so, that's when you plant them. Now, how do you plant them? As I mentioned, I like doing them in seed starters. Direct sowing is not recommended because the seed is so small. Once these get about, ah, say, this big, I'll plant them out into the garden. And I'll show you how to plant them in the garden next. All right, so we started one from seed. And guess what? Voila, I happen to have one here. I actually bought this from the nursery. If you can't tell, but... It's kind of like a cooking show where they have the, uh, the turkey in the oven already ready. So we didn't start uh, any marigolds for our San Diego farm because we have them all out at our Ramona farm. We have three huge rows of marigolds that are in the ground, super excited to do seed production for them. And I'll go on a little tangent here and talk a little bit about the varieties of marigolds. So if you buy a marigold plant from the nursery, chances are it's going to be a hybrid. There's not a lot of open pollinated marigold varieties on the market that you can find at a nursery. Now, what does that mean for you? Well, if you're not saving the seeds, it's not a big deal. But marigolds are one of the easiest and the funnest crops to save seed from because their heads, after they're done flowering, make these perfect little compact pockets of seed that you can simply pluck out put into a paper bag and you've got them for next year. So if you buy them from the nursery, you can still save seeds from them. However, if they're a hybrid, they're likely to be very different in the next generation that you plant out. But I encourage you to do some experimenting and see what comes of it, you never know. Out of our farm, we have a variety called Shades of Gold that we're super excited about that hopefully will be done seeding and will be ready to offer for next spring. So. Anyway, so uh, what else can you notice about this start? Well, it's pretty root bound, and that is a very common thing to find when you buy starts from a nursery. Because they're grown in a different location and they're trucked over and then they sit at the nursery for however long it takes for them to sell them, they can be very root bound. And um, this is a good example of what that means. If you pull a plant out of the six pack and no soil falls apart and it's very tough, then that means it's root bound and you have to break up those roots before you plant it. Otherwise, it's just really gonna be stagnant. It's not gonna do much at all. Now, a word of caution, when you break up these roots, it means that the plant is going to wilt a lot quicker. So if you take the plant out, you break up the roots and you plant it into dry soil on a hot day, immediately your plant is going to wilt and you're not gonna have good results. Even if you get the plant to bounce back, it's really a, a, a big uh, injury to the plant and it's going to stunt it. So my recommendations to you, whether it's a marigold or any plant that you're transplanting, do not, uh, do not plant on a really hot day. Plant either very early in the morning or I even prefer to plant in the evening so that there's time for the plant to uh, be in the evening cool weather before it gets assaulted with the hot southern sun. And make sure you water really, really well. So what I'm gonna do for this guy, my soil is so soft that, I mean, I can dig it with my hands. Look at that, it's really amazing. We're really proud of how just gorgeous this soil is. And that's a lot of years of compost and mulch. So I'm gonna dig a little hole here and Moana apparently is gonna come help. And I'm gonna water. 
She doesn't like the water. Come on, Napoli, you enjoying? So I'm gonna water and I'm gonna let this soak in and then I'm gonna water again and then I'm gonna water again. You really cannot overdo it. Now I've been running the irrigation here. So the soil is already moist. It's holding together so you can tell that there's moisture in it. But even so, if I were to break up these roots and plant this in the soil without watering, what are the results? The plant's gonna wilt, it's going to stunt it, and it's just not gonna be as happy as, as, as it could be. Now, if you have to plant during the middle of the day when it's hot, make sure you put up shade cloth. It really is gonna save your plants from wilting too much and being very unhappy. So, I'm gonna let that drain a little bit and I'm gonna talk about uh, how you would fertilize these. So marigolds, like a lot of bedding plants, was what they're called, are plants that are meant specifically to bloom. That's what you want, right? You want lots of marigold flowers. So if you're going to fertilize them, which I recommend, you wanna have a fertilizer that has plenty of phosphorus and potassium in it, okay? That's really important because that pushes the blooms of the flowers and doesn't produce as much foliage, but more blooms, which is what you want. Now, it's not rocket science, don't get very confused with that. Just know that if you buy a brand of fertilizer, it's going to say on there, it's going to explain that it's for blooms. So you can see that the water here has um, filtered through very quickly. If you've got really poor soil, that water might stay there for a really long time. Now I'm gonna break up the roots, and I know if you're a brand new gardener, that is terrifying because you feel like you're just you know, assaulting the plant, and you are but it is a necessary evil to make sure that the roots can, can continue to grow and explore for more um, plant nutrients and water in the soil. So that's about as much as you want. You don't have to go crazy. The point is, is to relieve it from that kind of winded bottom that makes it think that it's still in a pot. The roots will naturally go, okay, I'm in the soil now, time to grow. Now I'm gonna plant this in the ground and you want it to be at soil level uh, so actually I could make that a little less shallow. At soil level, you, what you don't want to do is to have a, so much soil piled up on here, that's gonna rot the stem, okay? So instead, you want the soil level to go right to where the soil level was before. So i put this in the ground. Now, this is planting it, then aftercare is so incredibly important. I'm gonna water this and I'm gonna water it many, 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 many times because, again, I'm planting at, well, it's 9.30 in the morning, not typically a time that I would wanna plant because now it's gonna get assaulted by the sun all day. But because I did, I need to ensure that it doesn't go through a period of dryness. Now, if you're planting in a raised bed, here is some golden advice for you. Pre-water the entire raised bed before you plant. Now think of it this way, if you have a really large sponge that is super dry and you wet just the corner of it, that sponge will suck all the water out of that tiny little wet corner and become dry very quickly. This is a common mistake I see with gardeners. They will dig their little hole, they'll put a little bit of water in it, while the rest of their garden is totally dry and then their plant will wilt and they don't understand why. Well that's because by capillary action, the, the, the water that was put there is going to be sucked into the dry areas. So I like to actually put my hose on just a little drip, 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 put it on the raised bed, saturate the whole raised bed so I know I have a really large wet sponge that is not gonna dry out easily in the beginning stages of the plant growth. Because this plant only has roots right here, if any of this area dries out, it's a goner. Okay, so you really wanna make sure that it stays moist the entire time. Okay, so let's talk about spacing. Now, depending on the variety of marigolds that you're planting, spacing can be very important if you want tons and tons of blooms and if you want to avoid some foliar diseases that are very common. Now, typically marigolds are planted in a bedding setting where, where they're planted very close together for effect and they're annuals, they're gonna give their flowers and then be done. They're not gonna last very long. That's great if you want just a quick, beautiful setting in the garden for a great Instagram photo and that's it. But if you want the plants to thrive, you need to give them space. 
anywhere from four to six inches is going to be necessary to have good airflow around the plant, allow for branching out and allow for more blooms. If I were to plant these really close together like that, well, it looks nice at first and it will look good for a couple of weeks, but the plants are gonna start competing with each other and they're not gonna get much bigger. I want them to get a little bit bigger. Uh, I want these to produce seed, so I'm gonna plant them a little bit further apart. I also like cutting them, using them in the kitchen, using them in bouquets, and so I wanna get as many blooms out of them as possible. So, you know, I love gardening because it can be kind of, you know, close. Use your hand, about a hand span in between the plants will do. If you are in uh, Florida or anywhere that gets a lot of humidity, this spacing is even more important because that airflow is going to prevent the plant from, from suffering as much from powdery mildew and downy mildew as hot, humid summer weather persists. They can actually dry out between rainstorms and they're less likely to have a bunch of foliar issues. So spacing, very important. Okay, so our final section here is on harvesting. How do you harvest the flowers? What's the best method? Well, marigolds, just like any flower that you're going to cut for a bouquet or for a display, it's best if you trim the flowers early in the morning. They're gonna have the most water in their stems and their blooms are gonna last the longest. So cool early morning um, time is the, is the best time to, to trim your blooms. Now, if you are cutting them for the sake of, of putting them maybe in, in, in a salad or putting them in something ornamental, then I like to trim them actually before they're fully open. They're going to continue to open after being trimmed. So this is a good example. This is a good example. This guy, he's already starting to kind of almost be too far along. It doesn't hurt, but he's not gonna last as long. And when you trim your marigolds, if you wanna get the most out of your blooms, follow the stem down to the next area where you see foliage here, okay? You see a little split and trim right in the middle. Why? Because these next ones, if you can zoom in here, you can see are going to become flowers. So if you prune them that way, then you're only encouraging this one to bloom next. So you'll get more blooms out of them. Marigolds are not typically, unless you're growing a very specific variety for cut flowers, they're not typically very long stemmed, which makes them a little more difficult for making arrangements. However, however, if you're a really good florist, you can do something super cool with these by just using these short little stems. They are perfectly great to put um, on top of cakes, uh, in the kitchen. Uh, I don't recommend eating any flowers that you get from a nursery because you don't know what was sprayed on them. But if you have homegrown marigolds, you can use them in the kitchen and they'll look really beautiful. We actually like to cut these and then I trim them a little bit shorter and I put them in a shallow bowl of water and I just let them float there and they look really pretty. In October, we actually use these to decorate our ofrendas, um, our offerings to people who have passed. And um, got my mom and my dad on that list this year, so I'm going to grow a lot of marigolds to decorate their altar so I can pay my respects to them. Now, if you're going to plant these for seed or you wanna save the seed, the great thing about them is once this flower is totally dry, which it isn't now, but for the sake of, of learning, I'll show you, the, the seeds actually live in here. So those are the immature seeds. And what's so cool is when they're dry, you basically just pull out this pocket of goodness. You don't lose a lot of seeds and they're just so easy to harvest. I really recommend if you've got kids, you wanna teach them how to harvest seed, they can see the bounty that marigolds provide once these are completely um, dried and mature. Now keep in mind, you have to let the flowers go well past the blooming period for that to happen, which means the plants are gonna look a little ugly. Totally worth it when you have tons of marigold seeds that you can scatter in the garden or you can plant by transplant. Now, uh, again, these are white. Marigold seeds are actually black, so these are immature. So you gotta wait enough time for them to become fully mature. Another point for just the care of marigolds is even if you're not going to save them from seed, or save the seed of the marigold. It's a good idea to prune back any uh, flowers that have already bloomed. It's called deadheading. 
that's going to allow them to put more energy into more bloom. So if you want tons of blooms so the birds and the butterflies and the bees can enjoy it, trim away any that are past their, their prime so they continue to pump out as many blooms as possible. All right, so I've talked a ton about marigolds because they're a really cool plant. They grow really well here in zone 9 and 10 and really across the United States. And they're beautiful. They bring a lot of pollinators into the garden. Everybody should grow them. They're super easy to grow from seed. So you've learned everything that you need to know how to grow them successfully. And keep in mind, we are giving away a marigold seed pack, so make sure you like and subscribe to this video, comment down below, and then sign up for our newsletter because that's how we announce who the winner is. So I'm hoping that we can get some marigold seeds into your hands and some marigold plants into your garden.